Hi, I'm Brad DeRoche. Welcome to my series on sight reading. This is day 15. This is the last day of our sight reading boot camp before we get into playing actual music, music notation. Um, in this boot camp so far, what we've done is we've worked on this strategy of finding the notes on the guitar in two different forms. The first step was to think in terms of letter names. So we did that like this, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so on. Then the second step was to add music notation. So we actually used pitches uh, in the form of these uh, handmade little cards with all of the notes, uh, natural notes on the guitar that came from this page. Um, once we started to get comfortable with the music notation, working in very small groups, um, then we should feel pretty confident that we know where all the notes are on the guitar, and we're, we would then be ready to start adding the complications of uh, rhythm and other symbols that come in in playing a standard piece of music in music notation. But all these things need to be sorted out and really thoroughly learned one step at a time. And I do believe it's this boot camp part that most people um, were usually not given good training in and don't learn very well. So then they're sort of guessing a lot of times where to play the notes or they might have a lack of knowledge of where the notes are in higher registers and tend to avoid those places, for instance. So anyway, that's the, the goal today is to uh, finalize our boot camp and get us through uh, all of the things we need to know to be able to really tackle playing music on the guitar. So today, the last day, day 15, uh, what we're going to look at are all the registers on the guitar. So it's basically this entire sheet now is in play. So every single one of these note groupings, every string, every register. Okay, um, you're ready for it. You can do this. If you've done these previous lessons well, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this. The only thing is, there are just more possible places to play each note. And so uh, in some cases you have four different registers to play the same note. And it gets kind of tricky. So the way that I would approach this is the same way that I approached it when uh, I was teaching in the previous lessons. I would start out with note groupings. So for instance, you could take the E, F, G group on the first string in the low register you play those, you just select those three cards out of the deck and you use those three and you play that in all of the four different locations that you can find them while looking at the music notation. Now to make it slightly more complicated, you shuffle those three cards around so that they may come in a different order and you set them on your music stand in front of you and you uh, just simply read them. Uh, it's, it's not really hard to do. That just takes a moment. So the hardest part, <laughs> the most time consuming, is finding the three notes within this group of 26. <laughs> That's the most time consuming part for me is that, where are those Where are those notes? Ah, there's an F, there's an E, oh, here they are. I got them all three, all right, E, F, G. So I found my notes, E, F, and G. So I'm gonna take that little grouping of notes I'm going to shuffle it up in some way, make, hopefully I've mixed them up some, and it came out uh, F, E, G. So I put that on my music stand, I look at them and I think, there's F, there's E, there's G in the low register. Then I move on next to the middle register and I play those again, F, E, G. I wanna do this while I'm looking at the music notation, I'm looking at these cards. Then in the high register here, F, E, G. And then one last time, F, E, G in the very high register. Okay, so step one is to put your note cards in the string register groupings, the three note groupings like I have on this sheet. So E, F, G would be one group, B, C, D would be another group, etc. So here's what you need. You need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groupings. All right, nine groupings to get all of them. There's six of them here plus three more, and that will give you all of the groups on the page, actually. The rest of them are just duplicates. Okay, so you do the string register groupings first. 
Then the next step would be to shuffle all these cards together and randomly select any single note. So let's say I've shuffled all of my cards and I just pick a single note out. All right, first one that came up was this note, A. Then I'm going to play that A in all of the registers. I'm gonna start with the low register. There's A, middle register A, and high register A. And now I also have a very high register A. Okay, so I'm gonna find that in all the different places on the neck. And again, look at the note while you're playing it. Look at the music notation. This is the, the point of this exercise, is to associate that note with four different placements on the fingerboard. A here, think that note, look at that note. A, <laughs> seventh fret on the fourth string, it's that one. 12th fret is that note. Look at that note. And then way up here, way up here, 17th fret, A. So I'll say it one last time. You're associating written notation, specific placement of that note head with a specific place on the guitar. But now it may be in as many as four different places because uh, the guitar has this re-entrant tuning where the notes come back. Okay, so that's step two is to go through and randomly select any single note and play it in all the different registers. Step three, the last step is to do, again, a random selection, but this time you say three notes. So I could even start with the A I just played. My notes would be A, B, and D. So I just found these three notes, they're all in a row. And so I play, I'm gonna use this as my three note melody. All right, A, B, and D. And I put those on my music stand. And I'm gonna start in each register, A, B, D. Then I'm gonna move up to middle register and try and play those again. Now, this is a little tricky because sometimes the notes won't be in a register. And you have to bounce down. A, B, D. And then I'm gonna move up again here, A, and then the B, I don't have in this register anymore. So I'm gonna to have to bounce down here for it, and then D. Does that make sense? All right, hopefully it does. And there's my A, highest one. So I, I went through and I took three notes and I tried to place them in all these different registers. And the only thing that that does beyond what you've already done with the, with the string register groupings and the single notes is that it complicates things a little by not having just one note to focus on, but by having three to have to move from one to the next. So it helps us to learn uh, to be able to read a melody better when we can think of three notes or more instead of just one at a time, all right? But I found that one thing that was really uh, interesting when I was teaching was that I find that students can deal with three notes, a group of three notes, and do it really, really well. And almost any group of three notes, uh, including complicated rhythms and other things to go along, and they have no problem with that. However, once it becomes five or six notes, uh, the challenge raises exponentially, and they struggle a lot more um, when there's five or six notes as opposed to three. So there's something about three note groupings that our mind can sort of contend with and grapple with pretty well. But once we start adding a whole bunch of extra notes, it gets a lot harder. All right, so if you want the ultimate challenge, that would be to just go through your note card, your whole deck, one at a time. Just take the top one. All right, it's a G, so you play that G, 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 and G, and then you just move on to the next card. The next card is E, and you go through your E, 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 and E, etc. until you can do each one in rapid succession. And then once you've done that, your boot camp is over, you should know where the notes are pretty well on the guitar and we're ready to start complicating things by throwing them into uh, different rhythms and so on. All right, and that'll be the next step in our, in our course is really contending with melodies, rhythms, and so on. All right, hopefully this was useful for you, these first 15 days of boot camp of learning the notes on the guitar. And um, you don't have to do them in 15 days, it might take you longer, and that's okay if it if it does. It's not a problem. And there's again, it's not a race. You're not trying to uh, uh, get to the end faster than anybody else. It's it's all about the quality of 
your memorization. Do you know where the notes are on the guitar and can you associate that with a uh, specific music notation note? And if you can, you're ready for the next step in really uh, learning the, uh, how to sight read quicker. All right, that's it for today and I will see you in the next lesson. Cheers. <laughs>